Hello and welcome to a show that gives you a chance to live your dream job. Every week, one of you gets a chance to work with a mentor, an icon, a celebrity who scales the heights of success and is willing to share those pearls of wisdom with you. He or she is going to assign you a set of tasks and it will be up to you to prove your ability to live that dream job. I'm Vikram Moza. This is Season 3 of The Assignment. This week on The Assignment, we meet Prakriti Bhargava. Hi, I'm Prakriti Bhargava. I'm a radio jockey and I head the Bollywood desk at the same radio station. What I really love about my job is people. My father was an army officer. Right from the time I've been a small child, I've always lived in houses which were ground floor houses. Each of them had lawns in the front, there was a backyard, there were sides, so there was a lot of space. Living in suburban Mumbai with her husband Rahul and pet dogs. But the Rezi city life has left Prakriti craving for a change. In Mumbai, the one thing that I really saw was this lack of space around houses. My dream job on the assignment would be to have an animal farm. An animal farm where I have dogs, horses. To interact with these animals, to learn how to take care of them if you are running a farm. We are headed to the village of Vahangao, it's just off the Mumbai Pune Highway and this is perhaps where we'll find a replica of Prakriti's dream and the man who's living that dream as well. So what do you call a man who is a horse whisperer, who is dog's best friend, who tills his own soil and flits around doing all of the above riding his all-terrain vehicle? Well, we call him Junaid Merchant. Let's meet him. Hi, my name is Junaid Merchant. Uh, by profession, I am a canine behaviorist. I train and breed dogs for explosive detection, narcotic detection, and then they get exported to various clients all over the world. I breed a rare breed of horses, Indian horses called the Marwari horses. And I develop farmlands uh, this is also a hobby and now it's also a business. I shifted out from the city about seven years ago and, you know, decided to choose this as my life and my profession. And I'm really happy doing what I do. In this episode, Prakriti will spend time at Junaid's farm and he will give her three tasks that he feels are essential for the success of any person wanting to fill his shoes. This is your assignment. This is the place where it's all going to happen. It's breathtakingly beautiful. Tell me why this qualifies as a dream job. I love my corporate job. I just completely love that as well, the glamour that is associated with it. But a point will come when I want something more. So maybe after the assignment is done, <laughs> I decide that yes, this is that something more which I want to go back to my roof. You know, the kind of lifestyle that you're talking about, there is this one man who's done just that. I trust that's him, arriving in style as always. It's good to see you, Junaid. Hi, welcome. Meet the lady in red. Hello, Hello pleasure. Hello, Junaid. Lovely meeting you. Tell us, Junaid, where you're coming from. Does it take a lot to be able to give it all up and have this kind of space? Yes. You need to cross that little line from the city to here. Mm -hmm. But it's a huge commitment. Come, let me show you around and let's see uh, what you're made of. <laughs> Junaid's land stretches as far as the eye can see. The 
farm itself is 40 acres and it houses two stables which have eight horses, lawns, a greenhouse. But work on a farm can be back-breaking and that's what Prakriti will now learn. Prakriti, I have an assignment for you. Right. The first thing we do at our farm in the morning is we let the horses out of their stables mm -hmm. and then the stables get cleaned. So what you're going to do this morning is lead out some of my horses into the paddock. Okay. And then we normally give them a wash down. So that's what you're going to do. I'll demonstrate how it's done. And then you can take it from there. Okay. All right, Prakriti. This is a simple piece of equipment we call the lead rope. Mm -hmm. If you just put your elbow up like that for me. Like this? We're going to assume this is the horse's head. Okay. All I need you to do is very gently, as you speak to the horse, you put this around the neck. And then you just push through this loop and make a second loop which goes on the horse's nose. Hmm. Gently tighten it and there you have a horse you can lead with one finger. You look pretty confident. I'm sure you're going to do a brilliant uh, work of this task that's assigned to you. Good luck. The horses are lovely. There's Noor, there's Amelia. There's Ariel and there's Ebony. I'm going to start with Noor right away. A typical day at the farm starts off in the way the first task started off. And I said, let's start her off as close to reality as possible. And I also wanted to see how comfortable she was around horses, whether she'd be able to give a horse a wash and a shampoo. Hello. Hi, Noor. As soon as I enter the stable, no very nicely comes to the edge of her uh, stable door. So it's almost like she's telling me, come, put it around me. Yeah, that's better. That's better. You're a good girl. So I start leading her out very gently and she walks with me. Then very gently, the way Junaid has taught me, I take off the lead strap and it just slips out. Now I have to get Amelia. She's standing in one corner of the stable and doesn't want to come. Now I'm going to take you for a walk. Come, come, come. Oh. Too much work. Come. So Junaid has already told me that since I'm wearing rings, all I need to do is I tap on the stable door, which is made of iron. And that sound is apparently pretty similar to the sound of the padded latch. So the horse understands that she's supposed to come to me because she's going to the paddock. I take Amelia along with me walking down the same route but halfway there she suddenly decides this is not working for me and she starts pulling me in the opposite direction for a fraction of a second I was like oh damn what am I going to do I walk around with her in the same direction where she's pulling me but while doing it I was nervous and I thought what if she suddenly pulls and she runs away and as I walk around with her, she walks around and lets me leave. Seeing the four of them running around and the breeze is going through their mane, they're just enjoying themselves. It strikes me, I wish each and every one of us were this free. There's this little place I see just before the stable. This is where the stirrups and the saddles and the hose pipes and all are kept. 
I had to take Emilia and give her a bath. I have never bathed a horse before. I wonder, you know, why was Emilia given to me? Because Emilia was pregnant and she was sparkling white. But then it struck me that maybe this was to test my patience. I poured as much water through the horse as much as I think she looks wet. I put some shampoo in my palm and I apply it on her spine from neck to the rump. I apply the shampoo. As I'm doing it, there's water falling down constantly on that ground beneath and it's splashing at me. Okay, Amelia. Oh. So, tumhara nana ho gaya, bichcha. Prakriti and task one, sweaty and wet. Now it's time for the report card as Junaid decides how well she's done. Back yes. from her first start and the clothes have changed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I needed to change them because I washed the horse Vikram. Yes. It was fun but I got wet. What worked and what didn't in uh, Prakriti's case, at least for this first start? The leading in was very nice. A little bit of trouble horses are bound to give her because she's new and like I said, they haven't been around women a lot, so I mean, it makes a difference. The one thing that concerned me is that after you finished giving a bath to Amelia, I had to have my guys hose her off all over again because you left a lot of residual shampoo. Ah. Whoa. We do not want to leave a residue on an animal that can cause skin conditions. Yes, of course, because it's a toxin. So, if you remember, I'd given you a blue scraper to scrape it off. That's right. And while you were scraping, I could see a lot of shampoo coming off. The scraper only scrapes out water. If you were to pass a judgment on how well has Prakriti done? Uh, I'd give her a six and a half. I'm going to give you two Belgian Shepherd dogs. All I need you to do is take them by the leash, lead them down to the lake. I don't want either my dogs or my toys getting lost because I really will get upset. Will Jeanette be happy with Prakriti's performance? Find out after the break.